an addendum, an addition to it, again, in a very clever way to start this. So, yes. Main Roosevelt <coughs> Corollary. And the Roosevelt Corollary says that the United States not only is going to protect the Western Hemisphere from Europe, but we're going to protect the Western Hemisphere, Western Hemisphere from ourselves. In other words, if there's economic instability, the United States has the right to intervene and take control. The United States does that. I mean, in the Dominican Republic, the United States runs the Customs House. Or not Dominican Republic, I'm sorry. Um, um, uh, Nicaragua. Runs the actually sets up this pattern of running the customs house. I don't have to look that up now. Uh, in which the United States collects the customs on goods coming in and out of the country, and then takes off the top what what the United States says the country owes the United States in loans, and then gives the rest of it to the government. And that's that's. The U.S. controlling the finances and making sure there's stability in the region. And the Clark Memorandum says, no, Roosevelt Corollary ain't bad. You know, uh, this isn't a good, this is not good policy. Clark Memorandum. Unfortunately, uh, Congress also passes the Smoot Hawley Tariff, which is horribly detrimental to establishing relations with uh, Latin America because it puts tariff funds coming out of Central America. Uh, it makes their products uh, more expensive. And that does some um, damage. But <clears throat> this is an attempt to improve relations, at least on the surface. And it's being really forced by what's going on in uh, Latin America. Um, there are, uh, during Hoover's administration, between 1929 and 1933, there are 60 revolutions or revolutionary disturbances in Latin America. Four years. 60 of them. OK, previous policy, if there's instability, we're going to send in the troops. There are 60 examples of instability in four years. Are we going to send in the troops every time like before? No, you can't. Something has to change. So it's not just Herbert Hoover saying, I think I feel like I want to be friends with Latin America. Can we just be friends? It's, it's not. It's being driven by what's going on. Of course, the depression is hit, right? It's a worldwide depression. It's affecting Latin America. Um, it's their uh, economies are collapsing, and um, they're, they're looking for change in government, and sometimes very dramatic change. I mean, some of these revolutionary uh, movements in, in Panama, for example, when they overthrow the uh, Panamanian government in 1930. Um, they're actually, the, the group, the core group doing that, they're actually leaping from the balcony of the National Bank next to the presidential <coughs> palace, leaping across to the balcony in the palace, and then taking control of the palace. And it doesn't last very long because the United States um, mobilizes about 9,000 troops in the Panama Canal and starts to uh, uh, move into the capital. And so um, things come under control very quickly in Panama, but it's very dramatic, 60 of them. So Hoover decides we're going to use non-recognition. Now the Hoover administration uses non-recognition in China, right? Dealing with China, not recognizing Japan. Non-recognition policy. And what does that mean? Well, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, if 
if you overthrow the government, we're not going to recognize you as a legitimate government. And what does that mean? Who cares? Who cares if the United States does not recognize you as a legitimate government? What's that? Yeah, economic exchange and activities come to a halt, right? <clears throat> During the Depression, it's not going to, while your economy is collapsing, the reason why you overthrew the government in the first place, so on and so on and so on. So non-recognition has some force, at least for a little while. It doesn't, it doesn't in Asia. The United States says, Japan, we're not going to recognize your seizing Chinese territory in Japan. It doesn't care. But why doesn't Japan care? Because they have the economic and military force to not care, right? Central America does not. They don't have that option. Their governments are dependent on what the United States is doing. So non-recognition, at least um, for a while. And then comes along Franklin. And he picks on up on this theme very quickly. In fact, in his inaugural 